your satellite remote. Now by means of videotape, let's go tour the site of the new Earth station nestled in the woods of northwest Atlanta. Now that I'm in your picture, you can see how big a 33-foot, 10-meter diameter dish really is. We're particularly proud that an Atlanta company, Scientific Atlanta, was selected to build the Atlanta Earth Station. They've manufactured equipment for more than 100 satellite Earth terminals around the world, but this is the first send and receive Earth Station built by Scientific Atlanta to be located in or near Atlanta. The exact location is inside the perimeter highway in northwest Atlanta at 33 degrees, 51 minutes, 0 seconds, north latitude, and 84 degrees, 28 minutes, 56 seconds, west longitude. And finding such a site in metro Atlanta took many, many months. Computers did it, checking out sky interference possibilities and also nearby point-to-point -point microwave stations that operate on almost the same frequencies. Putting up the station itself didn't take more than a few days. The mount for the antenna was placed on a concrete pad while the dish was being assembled out of 24 panels and ribs around a 72-inch diameter central hub. Then they use a large crane to place it on the mount. The house with the receiving and transmitting equipment comes almost ready to plug into power. And when it is lifted onto its pad, you're ready to connect the power and the antenna connections. The front of the antenna is the business end. This is Scientific Atlanta Model 8210 Cassegrain Feed System, named after a 17th century astronomer who produced a telescope with a specially shaped sub-reflector that's a smaller replica of the big surface. The antenna is like a big catcher's mitt aimed at the RCA SATCOM-2 satellite in geostationary orbit 22,300 miles above the equator, 36 degrees above our horizon. The horn-shaped element is aimed at the sub-reflector dish mounted out front and the transmitted energy comes out of the horn onto the small dish, reflected back to the big dish and out into space as a narrow beam. We're here on the platform behind the dish to take a look at the first part of the Earth Station's receiving system. These motors drive a gear train to move the antenna vertically for any elevation adjustment and horizontally for any azimuth adjustment. One set they seldom need to be changed since RCA follows their own SATCOM's place in the sky using miniature rockets for what is called station keeping. Inside the hub of the dish are located two low noise amplifiers which pick up the satellite transponder's weak signals and amplify them on all channels and send them through this coaxial cable to the equipment shed. I'm told one is a parametric amplifier, the other is a gas galenium arsenide amplifier, both solid state and very expensive. Here's the waveguide for the transmitted energy. It comes from the amplifier in the shed and goes out to the radiating feed horn that we saw earlier. So that's the front and the back of the antenna. The front is something like a camera lens, and we're here at the back where the pressure plate or film might be located if you like the camera analogy. You've seen where the high frequency energy goes out from the antenna and where the incoming beam is captured and amplified behind the antenna. This carefully air-conditioned or heated shed houses many more electronic goodies, racks of equipment that we'll examine with Jack Verner, the project engineer. Hello, Bill. Hi, Jack. Remember the rectangular pipe we called waveguide that delivered the RF energy to the radiating horn? Well, here's the amplifier or transmitter. Actually, two of them that send signals to the satellite, one for each uplink to a transponder. They're rated at 3 kilowatts each, and the frequency is about 6 gigahertz, or about 15 times the frequency of a UHF station. The preamp controls are at the top of this cabinet. The next two racks coming down for video exciters, and they even excite dull TV shows. Right, Jack? Well, I'm afraid not, although we could wish it were so, Bill. What these exciters actually do is determine the frequency and the modulation of the high power amplifiers or transmitters that we just saw. And these are filters, and I know this is a patch panel. And down right. here we have, what, is, what are these, two receivers? That's correct. The patch panel allows us to route video where we want it in the plant or reroute it if necessary. The two receivers here and here allow us to further amplify the signals from the low noise amplifiers that are located in the hub of the dish, which we've also already seen. 
Here we can change channels. We can switch to another transponder on the satellite simply by reaching up and flicking a switch. And presto, we have a picture here. Moving right along, this is the transmitter signal selector panel. That's correct. And here we have azimuth and elevation adjustments for the dish. We have a digital readout here and a digital readout here, which allows us to know where the dish is pointed at all times. And we can change the pointing of the dish if necessary to move to another satellite or to keep us honed in on the satellite we're looking at. And this is the switch for the de-icing unit, which keeps the ice off of uh, what part? That's correct, the feed horn of the dish. Feed and also the sub-reflector has heating elements, which keeps ice from forming on it, which can deteriorate the signal if that's allowed to occur. Here we have remote control equipment. The antenna can be positioned and our operating parameters can be determined from a point remotely located from this equipment shed if necessary. And of course down here we have monitoring equipment and test equipment. At the bottom a high definition TV monitor that shows the quality of pictures received from thousands of miles away or as close as Houston or New York. Jack Werner, thank you. You're welcome, Bill. That's our tour of the Atlanta Earth Station. WTCG Channel 17, the Turner Communications Station, will be the first major user of the RCA Earth Station, bringing back live telecasts of professional sports away games for the WTCG audience. Another planned major use is for distribution of WTCG's 24-hour programming by satellite to affiliated cable systems across the country. And yet another use is for pay cable services with professional sports and special events going back to cable systems in the southeast. There'll probably be another dish in another building here to expand satellite services such as data communications, private telephone lines, TV network link-ups, communication links that are part of RCA Americon's growing network of earth stations connecting major business centers throughout the country. What a dish!